Uh, the Azov movement and transnational right-wing extremist networks. And focusing on American group motivations here. Uh, so when it comes to the American extreme right, the Azov movement frequently has been viewed as either an organization and broader structure to imitate or as an opportunity to obtain military training and experience. And I would like to echo uh, what Michael said earlier that before continuing, it's, it's really important to note that it has become really almost impossible uh, for, for non-Ukrainians to join the regiment, and especially since potential fighters would have to enlist uh, with, with the Ukrainian National Guard. But you know, despite, despite that reality, um, when you look at some of these American extreme right groups, uh, that hasn't completely sunk in. And in some cases, there is still this misguided desire where uh, people think that this is this, you know, it's that it's something that can be done with a medium amount of effort, and they are they are wrong. Um, so, kind of looking at at American group motivations, we can see uh, emulation. Emulation, excuse me. Uh, we have groups and individuals that want to imitate uh, the political and military organization of Azov, um, of the movement, and either want to create armed movements with political components themselves and militia elements, or also there are accelerationist groups in the United States and in Europe uh, that would like to learn from Azov, but kind of function as separatists themselves, or in some cases, something more apocalyptic. And they're more interested in learning the, you know, the, the military arts and sciences from this. And then uh, additionally, a big part of this as well, there are groups that want to, that emulate the militant culture of the movement as a form of metapolitics and an effort to transform youth culture and the extreme right wing to be more oriented towards militant activism. Uh, these groups want to recreate the subculture associated with the Azov movement with the idea that extremist groups should present a cleaned up militant right wing counterculture based on camaraderie, white supremacy and separatism and the singular purpose of fighting against what is portrayed as a corrupted modern world destroyed by non European and liberal influences. So you sort of see this division and also there's overlap in American groups in the way that they tend to look at the Azov movement. And then on top of this, there are individuals who you know, have a desire to receive military training and acquire combat experience. This has been said multiple times, this is something that is not, not possible anymore. And uh, you also have people who are not necessarily affiliated with a specific group, but might want to learn a set of skills that would be off limits to them in, in their home country. Uh, so looking at historic sites of interaction between Azov and American and European and broader, broader extreme right groups, um, the Azov movement had a presence on the extreme fascist Iron March web forum. Uh, that forum was active between 2011 and 2017. And Iron March was a very narrowly focused online gathering site for some of the most radical white supremacists and was instrumental in the founding of uh, the American and also European group Adam Waffen Division, the British group National Action, and others. And the Iron March Forum has helped build some of these kind of like loose connections and loose kind of online networking um, that would later influence young neo-Nazis in the United States and, and abroad. Uh, additionally, as Michael stated, uh, you know, the Azov movement has additionally been active on social media uh, in the past, uh, including Facebook, uh, where in the past they have promoted the group. Uh, the group has additionally used telegram messaging services and the contact to spread their message. And uh, especially in relation to Facebook, uh, in an article in Time Magazine, uh, a Norwegian Azov recruiter did use Facebook to locate and communicate with individuals who he thought would be a good fit for the organization. Uh, additionally, uh, Azov has, the Azov movement has additional outreach throughout Ukraine, uh, including conferences uh, organized by the Azov movement and affiliated organizations uh, with European groups, including the Third Way and Youth Wing of the Far Right National Democratic Party, both in Germany. And additionally, uh, you know, Ukraine has been a travel destination in the past for extreme right wing networks. Um, so part of that has been in relation to the Asgard's Rye National Socialist Black Metal Festival, 
uh, so where in addition to hearing neo-Nazi bands has been in the past a huge networking opportunity for various extreme right groups, movements, and individuals to meet, get to know one another, and exchange ideas. Uh, additionally, uh, mixed martial arts tournaments have been a draw for various right-wing extremists and have been a networking and propaganda opportunity. Uh, some of them have taken place at a now closed bar and club where Azov members met with like-minded members or like-minded visitors, excuse me. Um, and additionally, uh, you know, there were visits to, to Azov movement from two members of the British neo-Nazi group National Action in December 2017 members of the American white supremacist group Rise Above Movement in 2018 and various French right-wing extremists. Um, <clears throat> moving uh, to some of these American right-wing extremist networks um, and kind of commenting, going back before on members of groups allegedly primarily interested in receiving advice and training uh, with the American neo-Nazi group Atomwaffen Division. Uh, the group's founder, Brandon Russell, was reportedly in contact with uh, representatives of the Azov movement through Iron March in 2015, uh, requested advice that could be applied to growing the membership of his own organization. Uh, sort of these online spaces speak to some of the transnational nature of the modern, the modern extreme right, both in the US and in Europe. The late Andrew Onishuk, uh, an early member of AWD, was interviewed on an Azov podcast and similarly was interested in lessons uh, that could be learned from the organization. Uh, and as Michael said, uh, two Adam Waffen members reportedly tried to join the Azov regiment before they were deported from Ukraine in October 2020. Uh, they were not able to join. Um, and one of those Adam Waffen members, uh, Ryan Birchfield, was also previously a member, uh, allegedly, of the accelerationist neo Nazi group, the base. And multiple other individuals in the Adam Waffen Division, other accelerationist groups, including the base and Foyer Creek Division, have expressed a desire to fight in the Azov Regiment, but have never traveled to Ukraine. And kind of going back again, that there's this idea in the American extreme right of, of the fighting in Ukraine as something that they can plug into. And this is not something based on the reality of the situation, but this is a very strong desire. Uh, in the American far right, and I think it's kind of important to, to recognize that, but also recognize uh, the, the that as a desire and not something that is necessarily possible um, in kind of looking at looking at Azov and looking at similar movements. Um, and then, you know, there are groups that are primarily interested in, in imitating and importing cultural aspects of, of the Azov movement. So the best example of this in the United States is the Rise Above movement and the affiliated active clubs. Um, the active club movement, um, you know, these groups have sought to create a white supremacist youth movement based on the idea of militant white supremacist counterculture. Um, Ram's leader, Rob Rundo, uh, has referred to Azov as, you know, he's the quote, uh, the future in a 2017 podcast that's participated in uh, Azov movement affiliated MMA events. Um, and then, you know, there are individuals and networks uh, interested in kind of a combination of, of both of these things, uh, such as propagandists and white supremacist internet personalities, uh, including a website that promotes the work of the American neo-Nazi James Mason, the author of the influential book Siege, uh, and a Telegram-based white supremacist and merchandise distributor who is active in the so-called White Lives Matter movement. Um, I'm going to sort of uh, skip ahead a bit. Um, and kind of just quickly address the issue of, you know, the, there's this question of designating Azov as a foreign terrorist organization. Uh, some U.S. lawmakers and counterterrorism professionals have advocated that Azov be designated as a foreign terrorist organization uh, due to the role the group has played in kind of right-wing extremist networks and the possibility of providing assistance and training. And, you know, despite being uh, a right-wing movement that has received the attention of violent extremist groups in the U.S. and elsewhere, you know, Azov has, has not uh, engaged in terrorist activity, nor does it directly threaten the security of U.S. nationals. And I think this is kind of important in thinking about the way that the U.S. uses this FTO designation um, and perhaps other tools that can be used um, in the tool belt. Um, important to note that Azov, Azov Regiment is part of the Ukrainian Ministry of the Interior, and uh, there are kind of secondary effects that disincentivize the group from direct involvement with American and European uh, extremist networks. Um, a good example of this was the prevention of two American alleged Adam Waffen members from joining. Uh, it's a good example of how behavior has possibly been shaped by, by institutional involvement. Um, 
And so kind of in, in answering this question, uh, I'm gonna agree with my esteemed colleague, uh, Dr. Dr. Kasper Rakowiec, that as of does not meet the necessary requirements uh, to be labeled a foreign terrorist organization by the US government. And um, I'm asking,